and welcome to the Introduction to Simulation with Kangaroo webinar. Uh, today we're going to be looking at how we can incorporate Kangaroo into our Grasshopper workflows. So by applying physical properties and forces to geometry, uh, we, can, we can create a fun and interactive way to implement physics-based constraints into our parametric workflows. Through a series of short presentations and live exercises, we're going to learn essential techniques for setting up and developing simulations with kangaroo and grasshopper, ranging from particle systems to spring networks. So I'm Gil Akos, and here with me is Ronnie Parsons. We are Mode Collective. And Mode is a multidisciplinary design collective located in Brooklyn, New York. And uh, we offer three sets of services that are um, interrelated and kind of overlap based on um, each particular project. Um, the first being Lateral. Um, under Lateral, we offer design consulting services, including bespoke tool creation and digital fabrication. And um, our, in design, we offer uh, standard design services for client-based projects and um, as well as our research uh, related to uh, our design process. <clears throat> And lastly is the lab, which is our share source initiative, consisting of a, re a web repository for the creative use of design technology. And through that, we offer a series of monthly webinars and bi-monthly workshops that we host here at our studio. So um, lab has its own website, uh, Mode Lab, and um, you've been to the website already because you've uh, signed up for this webinar. Um, and this is the location where we where we share and store all of the learning content that we produce uh, within the studio. Um, and I mentioned that we also conduct workshops um, periodically, and uh, this is a, a recent workshop that we did called Lattice Lab, which was back in November. that looked at topological modeling and 3D printing. And um, we just did a kind of year in review um, this last week and looked at what we did as a studio over the last 12 months, and in 2012, we uh, conducted 20 workshops. We had uh, 10 online courses, and you can see um, through the kind of matrix of images here the kind of diversity of the events that we uh, produced, as well as the kind of um, the output that some of our lab participants um, produced while they are working with us. We're really proud and excited about what we did last year and where this is going next year. So there's a, something like 125 videos on our website now, and this is going to be continuing to expand throughout the year, um, and we're really looking forward to conducting more workshops and sharing more uh, learning resources for all of you designers out there um, in 2013. And then lastly, um, I'd like to point out our Facebook URL. If you haven't already uh, connected with us via Facebook, we'd love it if you... Um, if you gave us a thumbs up. And here the idea with our Facebook page is that we really want to promote the community of uh, individuals that come and uh, work with us as clients, as um, workshop participants, and webinars. So um, through the Facebook page, we want to hear from you, and we hope that you can begin to connect with other mode labbers that are out there. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what we're going to be covering today. Um, the topics will include what is physics-based simulation and when is it useful? What types of simulations can I develop with Kangaroo, which will be the add-on to Grasshopper that we're using today? What are force objects and what is physical geometry? And how can I calibrate and control my simulation or all of the simulations that we're going to produce today? So a couple of uh, notes before we get started. Um, relative to uh, the kind of details of orchestrating the webinar. The webinar is going to be two and a half hours, including question and answer sessions after each exercise. We're going to record the web webinar and distribute it later. Um, we're going to chop it up into a series of shorter videos that you can come back and reference at any point um, in the future. Uh, so you should also have received recently an email with a link to the webinar source files. That link is also posted in the chat window through the GoToWebinar interface. So make sure that you have the correct versions installed and the instructor files downloaded. So these files are going to be for your reference. They're labeled sequentially 
We're going to produce everything from scratch together. And at the same time, both Ronnie and I will be uh, conducting this webinar. So uh, Ronnie will be answering technical questions on the fly while I run the, the presentation. And any um, re repeated or um, relevant topical questions that come up um, uh, through the questions window, Ronnie's going to re uh, redirect those to me and we'll talk about them as a group. And really, uh, through this webinar format, we really want to create as much of a live and interactive experience for you as possible. And at the same time, we're going to have a little bit of fun and learn a lot about physics-based simulation today. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and dive into um, the webinar. Uh, just one reminder, if you have any questions at all throughout the duration of the webinar, you're going to want to use the questions window through the GoToWebinar interface, and you will get a, an immediate response. This is this would range from anything to a technical question like where was that object that you just used um, to um, more conceptual or topical questions. So um, feel free to throw anything that uh, comes to mind into the questions window. All right. So um, we're going to be using Kangaroo, and um, Kangaroo is going to be the add-on for Grasshopper that we're going to be focusing on today. So just a brief recap about what Grasshopper is. Grasshopper is a node-based algorithm editor integrated with Rhino 3D's modeling tools. So what that means is that uh, we can define logical relationships between multiple design parameters, thereby creating a parametric model that will change based on the inputs that we supply. Right? And this falls within the visual programming paradigm. And um, what that means is that, for especially for beginners, it gives us a low entry point to begin to develop some more complex relationships within our model. And for more experienced users, we can keep going uh, deeper and deeper into developing really robust and interesting um, uh, models as a result of our use of Grasshopper. So um, if we're thinking about Grasshopper as a node-based editor, um, we want to have in mind uh, the fact that as we make any new connection within Grasshopper, it's going to try and solve that solution, right? It's going to try and uh, deal with all of the changing inputs and bring us to a resulting uh, configuration in the end. So um, when we're using Grasshopper just out of the box, um, we need to be conscious of how it's, how it's solving, which is kind of all at once, right? Any change is going to... Um, send a request to the solver to recompute everything, um, thereby giving us what in, what's a positive thing, a interactive model whenever we make any changes. Um, but some of the drawbacks are is that um, it's not really going to be solved incrementally, recursively, or over time. So we talked a lot about um, the first item here in uh, some of our webinars that we've already conducted, uh, specifically the Intro to Parametric Design webinar, which is free and uh, located on our website. And the incremental and recursive options, we talked a bit about those when we were using the add-on uh, for Python inside of Grasshopper. And that's um, really going to be, it's going to be, we're going to be required to use a scripting language in order to achieve that kind of solution. But this is the one that we haven't really addressed yet in any of our webinars, and it's going to be the topic for today. Um, when we're using simulation, this, the solution is actually going to be solved over time. All right. So defining the process of how we're going to find our solution determines how and to what degree you have control over that result. All right. So uh, we said that simulation is um, uh, related to time. So what exactly is that? Right. Um, the best uh, kind of uh, verbal description uh, that we've found is by Lars Spoybrek. And he says that simulation simply means to inform a virtual system, which, during the processing of that information, or information, takes on an actual structure that is a registering of its inputs. Okay. Um, so if we kind of um, simplify that a little bit and try and make it a little bit more direct, at least within the context of talking about physics-based simulation, we're going to be informing a virtual system with physical properties placing it under pressure or applying some sort of force and arriving at a specific structure, structure that's the result of the interaction between those physical properties and the forces or pressures at play. 